Now for part C of this question, what we've got to do is to find the tension in the rod as the system moves under the action of the force F. And to do this, what we need to do is consider either particle P or particle Q separately. And when we consider each of these particles, we just apply Newton's second law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. I'll give you both methods, but if I was doing this personally, I would only concentrate on particle P purely because it's got less forces in it. So we'll do that one first of all. I would say to the reader that I'm going to consider a particular particle, and in this case it's going to be P, and I'd say that I'm going to apply Newton's second law by looking at resolving towards the direction of motion. So to the right is going to be positive. Now in the previous part, remember we found out that the acceleration here was 1.25 meters per second per second. So we're going to be using that because both of these particles accelerate with the same acceleration. Okay, so if we resolve to the right, what's the total force acting to the right? Well, we've got all of T, and that's what we want to find. So we've got plus T, and then minus the 1. And as for the weight and the reaction, because these are perpendicular forces to the direction that we are resolving, they're not going to enter this equation. Okay, so that's the overall resultant force, and that force equals the mass, which is 0.3 kilograms, and we multiply that by the acceleration, which is 1.25. So if you do 0.3 times 1.25, and you add 1 to both sides, you'll get your tension. T will equal 1 plus 0.3 then, times 1.25. And if you work that out, what you get is 1.375 Newtons. Okay, so we'll put that in, 1.375 Newtons. Now, as I say, that's one way that we can do it. The other way is just to consider the second particle, particle Q. So, I'll do that for you now, we'll just go f for it, so we'll say consider particle Q. And if we do that, again we want to resolve in the direction of motion, so we'll resolve to the right, looking at the oval force acting on Q, which is going to be 4 Newtons, that's in the positive sense, minus the 2, minus the tension, T, Remember again, the reaction and the weight don't come into this because they're at right angles to the direction that we're resolving in. So this is the oval force acting on Q. And now this equals the mass times acceleration. The mass is 0 0.5 and the acceleration is 1.25. So again, if we rearrange this, We've got 4 minus 2, which is 2, so we've got therefore 2, minus t, I'm going to add t to both sides, and subtract 0 0.5 multiplied by 1.25. That would leave me with t. And if you work this sum out, you again get that t equals 1.375 newtons. So I prefer p because it's got less forces in, okay, than Q. But again, it doesn't really matter. It should end up with exactly the same answer.